Welcome to How to Rock Spirit's Sun Moon Alchemy series. This audio was compiled and recorded by Dustin Cormier, a Leo Ascendant Scorpio with Sagittarius Moon, born in the year of the Metal Ram. All the possible Western Sun and Moon sign combinations can be found and learned about here. This information is for educational purposes only. I do not own any of the following content. For more astrology lectures and my own Cosmic Consciousness audio lecture series, check out How to Rock Spirit's YouTube channel, where I rap about everything from philosophy and transpersonal psychology, to psychedelic spirituality, to tantric and occult mysticism, and even to Marx and Engels and the materialist sciences. See you there! Sun in a Water Sign Basically motivated by deep emotional yearnings and desires. Recharges energy through intense emotional experience and intimate involvement with people. Sun in Pisces. Creative energy is expressed sensitively and inspirationally. Needs to be recognized for compassionate, giving nature. Sense of individuality is not clearly focused due to empathy with lives and problems of others. Radiates a healing and compassionate spirit toward all that suffers. Vitality and self-expression are colored by soul yearnings, overwhelming vulnerability, and the state of the inner life. The moon sign and its element. These notes are also still from Stephen Arroyo's Chart Interpretation Handbook. The element of the moon sign represents an attunement from the past that manifests automatically, a mode of feeling and being that one needs to be aware of in order to feel inwardly secure and at home with oneself. This element and experiences related to it Feed your need to feel right about yourself. This element and experiences related to it feed your need to feel right about yourself. By such modes of self-expression, you are satisfying a deep inner need that can give stability to your entire personality. The moon's element also shows how you react instinctively to all experiences, with what energy you spontaneously adjust yourself to the flow of life. Moon in Water Signs reacts to changing experiences with sensitivity and emotion, feels comfortable with self when feelings are deeply involved. Sign position of the moon, how one reacts based on subconscious predisposition. Moon in Scorpio, reacts intensely, passionately, with controlled emotional power. Self-image affected by complex, turbulent emotions. Confidence sometimes undermined by negative emotions or supported by passionate sense of purpose. Depth of feelings and secretiveness contribute to person's mystique and charisma. A need to deeply penetrate experiences leads to comprehension of underlying motives or to imagining all sorts of fearful motives in others. Fear of vulnerability and losing control can lead to emotional repression. The following information comes from Isabel Hickey's Astrology, A Cosmic Science, copyright 1992 by Isabel M. Hickey Trust. Moon in Scorpio. Note that this is the fall position of the moon. Dominating and aggressive. Impatient and moody, given to brooding. Easily hurt and can be jealous. Impulsive. Desire is the motivating force. Strong pride and will. Intensely passionate in response to life. Set in ways and very stubborn. Apt to be disappointed in love. Apt to demand too much and not give enough of understanding. Sit in judgment on others too quickly. Greatest need? To learn to forgive and forget. Strong physically. Sensual. Extremist in temperament. Strong, deep feelings, but they need handling. Needs to achieve an optimistic attitude toward life. Go after what they want and usually get it and then find out it's not what they really wanted. In a male chart, will attract a possessive and jealous mate if moon is afflicted. Sun Moon Alchemy, the elemental combinations of the sun sign and the moon sign. The following information comes from Charles and Susie Harvey's Sun Sign Moon Sign. Copyright Charles and Susie Harvey, 1994, again in 2003 first published by Aquarian 1994. Each sun-moon type is a combination of elements. In the following descriptions of the element combinations, please remember that the pairing can be either way around. For example, a fire-earth combination refers equally to sun-fire-moon-earth, 
as it does to sun, earth, moon, fire. There will be subtle differences, but the dynamic is generally the same. The four pure types, with both sun and moon in the same element, most vividly express the element involved. Such an emphasis on one element also represents an imbalance, so such types are liable to swing into their complementary or opposite element. Water-water combinations. Water is the element of feelings and imagination, and the English language is full of water imagery, which is descriptive of this type. The strongly water type is able to get into the mainstream and go with the flow. They drink in life's experiences, and nothing washes over them. They can gush with feelings, quickly go misty with emotions, and dissolve into tears. Sentimental and nostalgic about the past, this type can wax lyrical about his longings for times gone by, as does the Anglo-Irish dramatist Oliver Goldsmith, Sun in Scorpio, Moon in Cancer. I love everything old. Old friends, old times, old manners, old books, old wine. This type can also at times be a wet blanket, especially to more boisterous fire types and restless air types. In politics, their compassionate natures incline them to be the caring and compassionate wets rather than the airy dries with their doctrinal purity. Hardier types may consider water individuals to be drips and still wet behind the ears. But still waters run deep, and the feeling strengths of the double water type give the capacity to empathize with others and to show caring concern for everyone in need. This individual also has a rich imagination and often the ability to get inside the skin of another. Hence the poetic, artistic, and theatrical talents often come easily. A confusion of personal boundaries is, however, an occupational hazard of the strongly watery type. They can be so sensitive that they become psychic sponges, picking up moods and emotional undercurrents in the environment, and unable to differentiate their own feelings and needs from those of others. This type wants emotional security and emotional food, and because the two do not always come together in equal doses, they can easily get hurt. If wounded, this person can withdraw into an icy silence, but once their feelings are recognized and addressed, their heart quickly melts and thaws out, and they are soon back in the flow of things. Shadow Side Swimming in the seas of subjectivity does not make it easy for double water types to engage in clearly reasoned arguments or objective judgments. They know how they personally feel about people or situations, and that is their reality, rather than a collection of objective facts which lead indubitably to a logical conclusion. Hence, the strongly watery individual tends to remain irrational when they think they are being rational. This type needs to learn how to think things through with more detachment. Yes, they may have had a bad experience with a Malaysian taxi driver, but does that really make all the Malaysian race bad? The double watery type is also prone to cling in relationships because they provide the arena for the emotional exchange, containment, and security that is so vital for this individual's well-being. This type often needs to learn that letting go of just a little and allowing loved ones more room for maneuver usually strengthens rather than jeopardizes a relationship. Male versus female. Water is undoubtedly a female-oriented element, and hence generally much easier in our society for females to handle than males. Whilst men can be sympathetic, caring, and compassionate, it is still not easy for men in the West to show their feelings or to allow themselves to be seen dissolving into tears. In consequence, Strongly watery men may actually swing into the opposite pole and become ultra-rational, detached, and unemotional to a degree that some would almost see as pathological. This can lead to men of this type, and some women, who take pride in showing no emotions and act only through reason. When this does happen, however, this type of polarized individual will always be found surrounded with highly emotional people and situations that act out the inner emotional life they find themselves unable to handle. This can be seen in the super rational husband with the hysterical wife, and the calm, reasonable psychologist who is deeply concerned in a supremely rational way to help those who have become confused and emotionally disturbed, quote unquote. 
The following observations about your Sun-Moon combination are drawn from insights gained from astrologer Jefferson Anderson's book, Sun Sign Moon Sign, an observation of many different individuals. The writing itself comes from Mantak Chia and William Yu Wei's Cosmic Astrology, copyright 2012 by North Star Trust, published by Destiny Books. Sun in Pisces, Moon in Scorpio, Cyclone. You enjoy deep exploration into whatever you find. Even the most ordinary matter can take on cosmic and meaningful implications for some Pisces Scorpios. You have a far-reaching and powerful imagination. Your mind is always active, taking things in and forming impressions of everything, no matter how still or modest you may seem. You have to deal with many difficulties like all serious emotional people. Pisces can be lifted up and given focus by the emotional strength, passion, and regenerating qualities of a Scorpio moon. You are high-powered, sober, and introspective. You are a very philosophical individual who is never content with external impressions. The dazzling heights of consciousness you reach, based on that same emotional power, can also pull you to the depths of misery and regret. This combination can create very neurotic, criminally inclined individuals, or it can result in spiritual and creative individuals. Charismatic, strong-minded, and apparently your own boss, you are, however, heavily influenced by your environment. You cling stubbornly to old ways of behaving, and your initial responses are too frequently your only ones. This combination has vast possibilities. However, if you do not utilize your creative possibilities constructively, you might turn all that fervor and energy in on yourself. Unleashing it on others is possible, and this can open the way to cruel or malicious behavior. Be careful of excesses of any sort, especially in romance, as in all things, because there is also the hidden possibility of addiction in your combination. The character of the Pisces Scorpio is often prejudiced and stubborn. Furthermore, you have an extremely sensual, indulgent nature, and enjoyment-seeking can effortlessly become the opponent of the Pisces Scorpio. To help you direct some of your abilities and to keep your emotions within bounds, you need lots of organization, discipline, and educational training. There's no end to what you can do if your powerful sensual drives can be channeled into creative or spiritual pursuits. Direction is the key here. You take the slightest criticism as an affront, and you are very touchy. Try to be a little less single-minded and become more tolerant. Do not focus so much on yourself, but turn your energies outward. It is not unusual to find yourself by losing yourself first. Notes from Charles and Susie Harvey's Sun Sign Moon Sign Sun in Pisces, Moon in Scorpio, Your Greatest Strengths Acute perception and vivid imagination. Tenacity, courage, and commitment in the face of adversity. Desire and innate ability to understand great mysteries. Ability to help and heal others who are in real despair. Your greatest weaknesses. Tendency to rely too heavily on personal opinion. Weakness for sensationalism. Proneness to be unaware of persistent prejudices and irrational suspicions. Negative self-absorption. Tendency to manipulate in order to gain power. Images for integration. Longfellow's poem, The Secret of the Sea. Steinbeck's novel, The Grapes of Wrath.